Welcome to the webinar, and I am so grateful that you're here. I want to honor your time. I'm going to explain what we're doing tonight and the flow and the format of this presentation. And then there'll be something that you might be interested in at, at the very end. So this webinar is about how to start replacing your healthcare income, not necessarily stating that you want to retire completely, but I've worked in healthcare for 25 plus years, and I know that a lot of my colleagues are quite frustrated with the current lay of the land. Challenges arise, systems change, administrators change, and most of the time we feel like a cog in the wheel. And I want to help you understand that there are a variety of options that you can utilize, whether you're just looking to create a passive stream of income, an extra source of, of uh, income for college education, retirement, what have you. I want to help you learn all the tricks that I use to ditch the hospital and craft a future that I was excited about. I'm going to share with you three qu critical questions that you need to ask yourself and understand, and some of these I'm sure you've already contemplated and maybe came up with the right answer or perhaps the wrong answer, and we'll get to those in just a minute. The first question is, telemedicine is? The next question, how about short-term rental? Is this the ticket out of medicine? Is this the ticket to retirement? And what about your mindset? How fast can you run? You probably run pretty fast as a clinician already, keeping up with your charting, patient demands, meetings, all the things that go along with being a busy healthcare professional. I want to share my story. We'll talk about the flow of this webinar, and then I'm going to give you three options that you can implement starting today, and then we'll wrap things up with a special offer just for you for sticking around till the end. My name is Mitchell. I'm an emergency medicine physician. I've been practicing for 20 plus years. And here's my story. Uh, I walked into my office. It was just a crazy busy day in the clinic. Uh, I had signed up for uh, ER shift over the weekend, and I testified in a child abuse case uh, the Friday afternoon before the weekend when I started a 36-hour shift in a smaller hospital covering the emergency department, which could be hellaciously busy. Um, anyways, my boss standing in my office with a stethoscope around his neck. Why he, why he had a stethoscope, I have no idea. He hadn't seen patients in years. He was trained as an internal medicine physician, but he always had this smirk on his face. It just, it always kind of chafed me, particularly when I was tired or had a difficult case. And in this situation, after a grueling week, he asked me how it was going. And I kind of smirked and I said, oh, you know how it's going. He could see the pile of charts on my desk. He could see the waiting room completely packed full. And uh, he said, well, I just want to stop by and see how you're doing and check in. And I'm like, okay well, this isn't working anymore. And he said, well, what do you mean this isn't working? Are you, are you, are you, are you going to do something else? Are you going to quit? And before I could really even contemplate it, I said, yes, yes, I am quitting. And he said, when? And I said, two weeks. And he said, all right, no problem. And he walked out and I was like, holy shit, I just quit. And so I called my wife and she's like, you got this. You'll figure it out. You're an emergency medicine physician. You're adaptable. You don't know the future. You can't predict uh, what's going to walk in the door next, and you come up with a plan and a strategy to tackle that. And so that's exactly what I did, and that's what I want to share in this webinar, a few tactics that you can implement yourself and uh, a broader picture beyond that as well. So here are the answers. Many of you maybe are contemplating telemed. Maybe your organization already has a telemedicine uh, branch of it where you could do that part-time. And I've been involved in telemedicine since basically the inception for over 10 years, I've been involved with some of the leaders of the industry, the giants, if you will, and a lot of startups in this space as well. And telemedicine, in my mind, is a race to the bottom. And what I'm getting at is declining compensation. When I first started, consults were around $75 per consult, whether it was phone or video. It didn't matter. They were all paid the same. And that has just gradually ratcheted down to, I don't want to say nothing, but if you consider that most of the, t the telemedicine positions are contract positions, 1099 positions. After you factor in payroll taxes and self-employment taxes and all the other fees that go along with it, it generally turns out to be about $6 per consult. And the other thing that I think people fail to recognize is depending on the institution and the platform, uh, a patient could be tied to you for up to 12 months. So they get access to you by email. They can text you. They can blow up uh, your, your inbox. They can send you chats, a variety of things for $6 for an entire year. And there's really no control. Even though I spelled it wrong there, there is still no control. You are uh, at the whim of the administrator running the ship or the platform. So if they ratchet down your 
availability, if they limit the number of consults you can do, if they change the states that you can practice in, you have no control over any of that. And you are tethered to your device. So most often you have to be in front of your computer. Maybe you could do it on your iPhone. It used to be that you could do a lot of these uh, on a smartphone, but many companies have changed the, the paradigm for that, making it difficult to complete that. So keep that in mind. If you're thinking that telemedicine is your ticket out of the, the, the uh, call schedule or nights or weekends or holidays, it's going to take a lot of time for money to make that engine spin fast enough to, ge to generate the kind of income you're probably making as a clinician in the hospital or the clinic. Next is Airbnb. Uh, I've been in the real estate space for about 10 years, and I have an Airbnb. I love it, and there are some specific strategies that I'll share in the course that discuss how this can be extremely beneficial from a tax perspective. But keep in mind that all around the country, there's scarcity and shortage of housing, and you have very little control over the regulation. I live in an urban area, which basically means that you have to be owner occupied to have a short-term rental you have to live in the property that you rent out so unless you want you know random people sleeping in your bed sporadically throughout the year that's not a great strategy that's not something that myself or my wife are comfortable with and so we have a short-term rental that's in the suburbs that allow that but the state that i'm living in has now proposed a 4x increase in occupancy tax so we already pay 9.8 percent tax and they're talking about ratcheting that up for short-term rental operators to potentially four times that amount, so 40% tax rate, which is totally ludicrous. But the important thing is that if you go into the Airbnb or the short-term rental market, you have to have exit strategies, number one, and number two, multiple strategies on how you might run that property should the local municipality shut you down, in effect, by imposing taxes or basically pulling the plug on you. Unfortunately, I have some friends that have kind of skirted that issue and run Airbnbs uh, despite not having a license and trying to run it under the radar of the city. But invariably, somebody will report you. There will be an issue that pops up, and it can get really ugly. And unless you're interested in being a, to a toilet and termite expert, you know, if you're going to self-manage your property, uh, there's, there's the calls, there's the snow, there's the issues that pop up invariably, there's the parties, all those things go along with it. There are definitely some technology and tools that uh, I can share with you that help mitigate some of those headaches and those issues, but that's just the reality of it. You might say, well, I'm just going to hire a manager. Well, you certainly can, but most management companies charge at a minimum probably 20%, some up into the 30% range, and that certainly eats into your profit. If you throw on an increased occupancy tax with a 30% management fee, even a 25% management fee, you're, you're kind of scraping by. There are a lot of hidden fees that go along with short-term rentals that most people when they get into it, aren't aware of. And it's really about running the numbers ahead of time. There are some software and some tools that I've created that really allow looking at a property and pl plugging it into the algorithm to really make a accurate prediction about whether this is going to be a cash cow or a headache. The last is run. How fast can you run? Most of you are probably on a treadmill that's going pretty fast. You have to see a certain number of patients per day. You may not have much control over the length of time of your visits. You have uh, administrative tax that you have to do, and it's not sustainable. Uh, I've, I've been there. You were there right now, most likely, if you're watching this webinar, and it leads to burnout. My wife uh, is, a, is a former clinician as well who went through uh, a phase of burnout that lasted several years and ended up with, with her selling her practice and retiring uh, from dentistry, and she now coaches and works with female entrepreneurs, executives, how to get through this, how to change the mindset, and how to implement some mental health and practice management strategies to try to prevent burnout or escape from it if they're already in it. So that is the reality of what healthcare is like, at least in the United States at present time. And how much more can you do? Uh, I mean, you're already working. Are you going to go out and get a part-time job? Are you going to moonlight? Are you Are going to do locum work? I've done all those things, and I, I, I say to you, it's not sustainable. It takes time away from your family. You're going to look back. And you're going to say, what happened to my time and my life? I've been at this for more than 10 years as an entrepreneur. I have not been an employed uh, person for 10 plus years. And I've done a multitude of projects that span the realm of entrepreneurial opportunities. I'm going to share a few of those with you tonight because I think that they're most applicable to you as a clinician, whether you're a nurse, uh, 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 healthcare tech, physical therapist, it doesn't really matter. The fact that you have expertise and education in the healthcare realm puts you light years ahead of the general population and all that is highly valuable and I'm going to show you how to use those 
unfair advantages, if you will, in a minute. We cannot become what we want by remaining where we are. And I think that is one of the sticking points. As I exited my journey, a lot of my colleagues were perplexed, like, how can you quit? You know, you went to emergency medicine uh, residency and you do all these things and now you're just going to throw it away. I didn't throw anything away. I've carried it all forward with me along with the lessons that I learned throughout that journey. So the three answers that I want to present to you tonight, the three avenues or opportunities, if you will, relate to consulting, writing, and speaking. And we're going to break these down individually, and I'll give you some practical tools and uh, tactics that you can implement at the end of this webinar starting tonight or tomorrow whenever you're watching this, if you're watching on the replay as well. The first is consulting. I've been consulting in a variety of healthcare-related ventures, some of them directly related to patient care, most of them not. And I'll share with you how you can go about finding those opportunities, what type of income you might expect from that, and why you are perfectly suited for this. You have the unique set of skills, experiences, and knowledge that industry needs, that people need, that companies need. You've seen things, you've created things, you've experienced things, that unless you work directly in the trenches of healthcare, People can only speculate. I mean, everybody's been a patient at one point in time, but being on the other side of the fence gives you a clearly different advantage when looking at problems and coming up with solutions. This is highly valuable. So the first is to, to decide what your niche is. I started out consulting in the EMR space. It was right at the time when the government was mandating a switch to electronic medical records, and people were freaking out. And... I didn't have any expertise in this, but I got access to the sandbox, if you will, of a proprietary EHR system, and I had also had a little bit of experience with some other homemade kind of remedies that a, a coder clinician friend of mine had made for one of the organizations I worked for. And after getting access to the sandbox, I spent a couple weekends of my own time just plowing through their educational material and became basically an expert, or at least an expert enough to to throw up my consulting shingle. And I did that for about three years, and I traveled around the country, and I helped emergency medicine physicians learn how to implement and use these EHR systems effectively. Depending on the institution, emergency medicine, like a lot of healthcare specialties, can be tied to productivity. And emergency physicians were, at this institution, completely freaked out the fact that they were going to be slow, their income was going to suffer. And I went there for two weeks and worked with the entire staff and also ended up on the floors in the ICU and several other areas helping other clinicians who were just overwhelmed by the process. And in the end, we had their efficiency back up to 90% of what it was before the EHR was implemented. And now it's well beyond that. They mastered the system and that was a highly lucrative position. And it was honestly a cakewalk. Basically, I showed up in the emergency department at 8 a.m. in the morning with a cup of coffee Total relax because I wasn't dealing with the trauma victims. I wasn't taking care of the gunshot wounds. I didn't have the drug overdoses, all the things that go along with emergency medicine. And I could help the clinician. And I knew what they were going to order. I knew the flow of how the patient care and visit would transpire. I could already be prompting them ahead of time how to start thinking about their order sets, their discharge summaries, getting their prescriptions preliminarily written in the system for discharge and helping them navigate the order sets. Very simple. And by the end of the two weeks, I basically was just walking around, listening to podcasts, answering a few questions here or there. You know, very simple. The process, basically, you can come up with your own unique process, your method, or your system, depending on what your niche is. You have the information, the skills, the knowledge that is highly valuable. You are already light years ahead of others who are trying to do what you are sharing. And it's easier to find these opportunities than you think. The first thing is just to tell people that you do this. And don't be bashful. Don't be afraid. Don't be embarrassed. Don't worry about what your colleagues think. In a couple of years, you're going to be well beyond this and so much more free. They're just going to look at you with envy and jelly, jealousy. That's what my experience was. First, they scorned me, scoured at me, talked bad about me, whatever. It didn't matter. I knew where I was going, and I knew how to get there. And this was one of the first steps that I implemented way back in 2013. Look around. There are plenty of uh, sites on the Internet where you can find consulting gigs. And ask. Ask if you have friends, colleagues, family members who are working in an in a industry that you think that you can provide value to. Ask who might have a need or a problem that they can't solve or just want a fresh set of eyes. This doesn't have to be a full-time gig or a, a permanent position. It can be something like a one-off consultation that you do in a couple hours or a weekend or a week. It's up to you to decide. The cool thing is you get to decide your fees. 
and it's more than time and you're free to negotiate. I've had plenty of back and forth with my consulting clients about what seems reasonable or unreasonable. And I think the bottom line here is to set a benchmark of what you will not accept, what you will not go below. And that's completely up to you to decide. But I just want to share some context. Some of my students work uh, consulting in the um, disability space, and that's a space that I've been consulting in since 2012. And so this particular uh, colleague charges $1 per page of medical records reviewed, and then he charges an exam fee, and he charges a no-show fee, and he charges a medical opinion fee. And he is an expert. He's an orthopedic uh, provider. He's not a surgeon. He's a non-operative orthopedic uh, specialist, so basically sports medicine, if you will. But because he has that background, he can consult on car accidents, neck pain, occupational injuries, a whole host of things. Anyways, so he reviews the chart, reviews the paperwork that they send him, meets with the patient probably about 30 minutes, one-on-one, -on -one, maybe even less, depending on what the situation is, uh, generates his exam findings and a report and a, a disability summary and sends it off to the insurance company. And it's not uncommon for him to earn between twelve fifty and twenty five hundred dollars for these cases. You realize that a lot of the records that are sent by an insurance company that you are asked to review aren't really relevant. There's demographic sheets, there's face sheets, there's nursing notes about what they ate. There are things that aren't particularly relevant for uh, a back injury case or a car accident case. And a lot of that is, you know, you look at it and you evaluate it, make sure you didn't miss anything, but it's just flipping pages. And just every page is, that's being turned, uh, you can see the, the ticker going up. So I just want you to keep that in mind, looking at what you generate on a typical basis on your shift, whether you're a nurse, a physical therapist, an uh, orderly, it doesn't matter. Consulting jobs, they're everywhere. I get inbox messages on a daily basis. I've actually started to create a uh, spreadsheet with emails of all these people messaging me about jobs that I'm not particularly interested in, and I'm going to create a course around helping them with their messaging because it's often generic and overwhelming. So that's beside the point. It's easy to find these things. Go into LinkedIn, go on Google search, use ChatGPT, whatever you want to do. I would encourage you, if you are on LinkedIn, to put a open for work overlay on your profile photo. That's how I've gotten several very lucrative consulting jobs. People will message you, and uh, you can sift through them. You don't have to respond to everyone if you don't want to. Obviously, networking, a uh, dirty word, if you will, but networking, letting people know that you are interested in consulting and you're open to work and letting them know what your skill or your niche is is a great way to get referrals. And there are multiple other platforms. I'm just showing you LinkedIn. This is inside my LinkedIn account. You can see my profile picture on the upper right side there. And I just typed in consulting jobs and you can see the wealth of them there as well. This is on a site called Upwork. I haven't worked on this uh, recently, but uh, this you can see I've highlighted one of the clients that have obscured part of their name for privacy here. But you can see that this is what I've built them. And this was a writing project. I've done a multitude of projects, whether it's writing, uh, book chapters, um, forewords to books. I've worked on content for medical-related apps. I mean, the sky is really the limit. And this is a very robust system. Obviously, you're competing with people that maybe are going to charge a much lower hourly rate. But there are plenty of companies out there that have specifically in their title, they want a specific set of initials behind your name, whether it's RN, LPN, APN, MD, RPH, I mean, they're all there. You'll see when you dig into the Upwork platform, uh, they're there for you to find. These are the few of the things that I've worked on in the recent past. I've done online training for other companies involving video creation. I've worked uh, with global um, telemedicine companies doing consultations and training staff overseas. Worked on a project related to uh, laser use in, in medicine. I'm not a laser practitioner. I'm not a... a uh, medical spa type person, but I've been involved in those projects just because of the expertise of a physician and being able to look at some of their documentation and helping steer them along the way. And then there's other projects, like I mentioned already, the electronic medical records and a variety of other uh, companies that require physician or advanced practitioner oversight or even uh, nursing uh, talents to review some of the materials that they're putting out to patients and projects that they are working on and and um, resources on their own platform. Next we're going to move on to writing. I put out my first ebook I don't even know how long ago. It was just a short book. It wasn't even really a book. It was nine pages in length and this is something that you do already every day. You generate content whether you realize it or not. 
I have several students that are speaking their books. They're very articulate. They speak much better than I do, and they record their voice, and this can be put into an audiobook, but it can also be transcribed and packaged up and sent off to an editor and packaged and sold on Amazon and all the other ebook platforms that are out there. Not everybody reads on Kindle. There are plenty of other ebook platforms out there, and I encourage you to share your voice. It's something that you do already, and you educate, you entertain, and you're an authority. Just keep that in mind. You have all those things as an unfair advantage, and you are an expert, I guarantee you, in many things related to healthcare, and most likely you have a hobby or some other passion that you could share in a book format as well. If you're totally freaked out by the thought of writing a book, I encourage you to check out self-publishing. You can Google Chandler Bolt, and uh, I went to an event that uh, was highlighting some of the, the content and work that he's been putting out lately, and uh, we were told by the... Uh, the powers that be that he's on track to exceed $5 million in personal income this year. So just keep that in mind. When you see his picture, you'll realize exactly how young he really is. There are plenty of tools out there. I'll share a few of those with you. But obviously, our artificial intelligence, I'm not telling you to write a book, have AI write the book, but I know people that do that. Uh, but the power of AI to help you brainstorm ideas, come up with chapter outlines, create photorealistic images for your book, uh, the sky is really the limit, and it continues to expand on a daily basis. I'm part of a consulting group that deals with AI in healthcare and productivity, and some of the things that people are coming up with are just mind-blowing. I say to my wife almost every day, I learn something that I never thought possible about AI and how I could implement this or how she could implement this in her business. And as I mentioned earlier, there are multiple platforms to share your work on, and I encourage you, if you've done the work, why not share it everywhere besides Kindle, there's Smashwords, Gumroad, Kobo, Barnes & Noble, Scribe, a whole host of other platforms. You can sell it on your own blog. I mean, the, the sky is really the limit. The important thing to understand, though, is it takes a lot of books to generate the income you're probably hoping. I mean, if you look at the breakdown here, you can see how this is KDP, Kindle, direct publishing, and how there's a fee split depending on the price of your book. So most of my books are priced in the 70% split range, which means that I get a higher percentage royalty uh, from them. But you can sell a book for 99 cents, so you're in the 35% royalty. So you can do the math. How many 35 cent hits is it going to take to generate a substantial amount of income to get that dream vacation that you wanted, pay for your kid's first year of college, pay off your, your uh, student loan debt or your medical school, school debt or dentistry, dental school debt, what have you. you. You get the point. I won't belabor that. But the important thing is that once you've done the work, why not syndicate this? Your, your book can become a course. Your uh, course can be uh, cross-sold sold, uh, across other platforms. So what I'm getting at is write your book, sell your related course inside the book, promote this on social media, share this widely with your, with your network, with your audience, your fan base, your family, your friends. You've done the work. Why not benefit from it? The tools that I like to use... Number one is Scrivener. You can use Google Docs. You can use a you can just use a, a plain text word processor if you like, or or Note on your Apple, whatever you like to do. I like Scrivener because it's easy to customize, drag and drop, move content around. You can add images, and it 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 binds it, it compiles it at the end to whatever format you want. There's specific formats that are required for certain ebook platforms, and it's important to get those right uh, from the start. Grammarly, if you're not familiar with this, this is basically exactly what it sounds like. Uh, I make a lot of gram grammatical errors, as you can tell from my speech pattern, but that's just how I am. I'm just I'm a car crash doctor, emergency medicine, all the way. And so Grammarly helps correct that, polishes it, makes suggestions, helps with punctuation, and it has a built-in functionality with AI, which I played with a little bit. I like other tools better for that, which I'm going to get to here next, which includes Jasper. So if you're looking for a fetchy book title or perhaps a uh, email uh, content to share your book or share your work with, Jasper can help you write that. Uh, obviously, the AI platforms like ChatGPT, Bard, Ask Claude, uh, I've got probably seven or eight of them saved in my bookmark tab on my laptop right now in front of me. These are all things that I use on a daily basis to help generate content, generate ideas, uh, craft messaging, and it just really speeds up the entire process. You'll be amazed once you start playing with these tools if you understand how to ask the right questions and ask the right prompts. And these are things that we cover inside the uh, course as well, which I'll get to at the end. This is the wheel strategy, if I, if I will. I've got several wheel strategies that I implement in other facets of my uh, business, whether it's online or stock option trading or other things. But wrote a book in 2013, 
uh, iterated on that book and expanded on it in 2014, uh, had it translated into uh, another language, uh, syndicated the book across multiple platforms. Uh, the book is now in its fifth version. It's been expanded from the original version was seven pages. I think we're up to like 85 pages now. So it's still a pretty tiny book in the scheme of it. And in 2020, I started consulting on the topic and the content inside this book. I don't do that anymore because that's trading time for dollars and uh, the, the cost benefit analysis just wasn't there for what my time is worth per hour. So I, sh I shifted away from that. But this book is still live. It still exists. It still sells. I still get uh, royalties from Amazon and a variety of other platforms. And over the past 10 years, that has added up to a, a nice tidy sum. I'm not promising you any specific dollar amount. You're going to have to do the work. You're going to have to do the research and plan this out on your own. But the power is there, and I'm confident that you have the ability, that you have, that you have a book in you is what I wanted to say. The last is speaking. This is not necessarily about public speaking, and we'll get to the different avenues that this can be quite lucrative as a healthcare professional in just a minute. So your voice can be shared on a multitude of stages. This could be a podcast, yours or others, YouTube, panels, m and conferences, industry conferences. You can teach online courses. You pick what you're most comfortable with. People always say that the fear of public speaking is, is number one. I don't think that's true. I think people speak all day long. Maybe they don't want to get in front of a huge audience, and that's totally fine. You don't have to get in front of a live group of 1,000 people to make an impact, even if you're just helping one person on their journey, which is how I approach all these presentations that I do. They're not highly polished as you can tell, but if I'm helping one person, that's all that I need to accomplish with any of these presentations or webinars that I'm giving. I've been teaching online for a long time. This is an uh, email that I got from Udemy. I have one course there right now. I used to have more courses there. And uh, approaching 20,000 students, as you can see the date on the uh, statistic there. And these are scattered around the scattered around the world, essentially over 100 countries thus far. I took it down off of Udemy because they were restrictive in terms of the content. Some of the content I teach is a little bit graphic. Obviously, as a healthcare professional, we're used to seeing things and speaking in a certain manner and trying to educate people. And sometimes the only way to do that is to share graphic or discuss things in a graphic tone. And so I took most of that down because I wanted to communicate more effectively with my students. I wanted to be able to share what I wanted to share, what I thought was most valuable in their journey. And that's why everything that I'm teaching is now on Thinkific. And I'll be sharing that link at the end uh, for you. You have options in terms of speaking. This could be your podcast. It could be a friend's podcast. You can reach out to people uh, across the industry in your niche and ask to be on their podcast, giving them value. Uh, you can speak live. You can speak on demand. This webinar is live, being recorded live, but it'll be available for replay on demand as well. Basically, you choose what you are comfortable with. I would encourage you to pick one and commit to doing one of these in the next 30 days, whether this is your first podcast, whether you uh, volunteer to be on somebody else's podcast. People who interview people for podcasts are always looking for quality guests, and you as a healthcare professional have already branded yourself as that. You can speak on a variety of topics based on your experience and your niche, or you can just speak on your, your hobby or your passion, something completely unrelated to your training as a healthcare professional. The process that I wanted to encourage you is basically shifting your mindset your value, your minimum value right now, I would suggest to get on somebody else's stage at an event should be $5,000 minimum. And depending on the structure of the event, there's opportunities to be paid to speak or to sell your own product from the stage or have a table at the back of the room when you're done speaking and sell from there or have somebody sell while you speak. You can become an affiliate of the event or you can do revenue, revenue share. Perhaps you don't get paid to speak, but they allow you to promote your product and they promote it to their list of attendees and uh, followers as well, and you split the revenue. There's a variety of ways to generate income from sharing your voice. And I want to encourage you to connect with people. This is something that is so powerful, particularly in the speaking realm. And by just letting people know that you're interested in this as an opportunity to share your message, to educate, to entertain, to provide value, just remember, everybody starts from somewhere. And I don't want you to shortchange yourself. I don't want you to volunteer to speak at tons of events for free without 
getting some type of reward, whether that's a connection, a uh, promise to return the following year as a paid speaker, something. Your time is valuable, and, and that's probably the biggest take-home point of this presentation is your time is highly valuable, and as a healthcare professional, you are pretty much stuck trading time for money, and there are many ways around that, and that's, that's the hope, that's the overriding goal of everything I'm sharing tonight. All right. So I want to thank you for your attention. You can find me on LinkedIn. I'm a real person, Mitchell Schwent, MD. Uh, it's just Mitchell Schwent on LinkedIn. I'm on Instagram, YouTube. I have a channel there where I share primarily educational content, sometimes a little bit of a, a humorous or just lifetime, lifestyle stuff, but most of it's centered around health, wellness, productivity, and travel. Obviously, I'm a physician, but like you, I have many interests, and that's why you see a variety of, of different unrelated tangential topics on the sites that I run. This is where I'm at right now, and this is what I would encourage you to check out after watching this webinar. This is the course on Thinkific. It's called The Healthcare Hustle. And I wanna share inside what, what's inside this course and what you can expect, what are the takeaways from this course. So the course is structured in modules. You can complete these a la carte. This is a choose your own adventure, if you will. I'm sure not everything I shared tonight resonates with you. There may be some things that, that are appealing and seem easy and immediately doable and other things that you have absolutely no interest in and that's totally fine. These are things that I've done, my students have done successfully and most of these th are things that I still do in some fashion whether it's uh, hands-on or automated to this date. The first point is why? Why are you doing this? I think you already know if you stuck around this far on this webinar why, why you're doing this, why this is important now. Healthcare is not going to get better for anybody. It, it's been proven. Uh, I mean, AI will improve some aspects of healthcare, but for the person in the trenches, it is going to be a, a race to the bottom. I guarantee you that. I've seen that in, in almost every organization that I have worked for. So that's step one is to understand what's at stake if you do nothing, if you don't change, if you don't try something, if you don't put yourself out there, if you don't adopt a growth mindset and lean into the fear and do it, you're going to be in the same place next year and three years from now. And how's that going to leave you feel? And more importantly, how's that going to leave your family feel? Your children, your wife, your spouse, your loved ones, everybody's going to feel the impact of your action or lack thereof. Some of the modules that we talk about writing, I'm going to break down the, the strategy, tactics, and tools that I use specifically for writing and generating content. We'll dive more deep in depth of consulting. I cover all aspects of a variety of aspects in real estate. I've been in real estate for 10 plus years, and it's not just buying a single family house. I think that is probably the least viable strategy out of everything that real estate has to offer, and we'll touch on multiple uh, aspects and avenues that you can implement if you're interested in the real estate game. Teaching, you're obviously here watching this webinar. I teach a lot of content on a variety of courses, and I've been doing that for a number of years, and I'm going to continue to do that in the foreseeable future because I really like sharing and hopefully providing value. We'll talk about affiliate marketing and how to get paid for sharing products you already know, like, and trust, and how to get others to share your projects and products as well. All my courses are living courses. They're updated periodically. Content is taken down and replaced and uh, freshened up, if you will. And so if you w log into a course one day and you go back the next day and there's a new lecture there, that's how it is because the volume of information and the tactics that are applicable now change. The things that I was teaching back in uh, 2015 are no longer applicable and they've been removed. And this course in particular is an a la carte adventure. I don't want you to consume it from A to Z. I want you to pick a module that seems to resonate with your interests or your skill set and go ahead and pull back the cover and take a peek at what's inside and see if it resonates with you. At the end of the course, there is a bonus section where we'll put in webinars, Q&A sessions, and other bonus content that is growing as I speak. So as I mentioned, the self-paced, they're downloadable checklists and action steps at the end of each module. And uh, you'll be the first to access any new programs that go on there. Usually this is something that I reserve in a pre-launch phase for my existing students where they can get into the course as it's launching or after it's launched for a special discounted price. This is what the website looks like. So if you go to exponential dot thinkific.com and I'll put the link below this video you're going to see a variety of courses that I teach there as well you're going to want to continue on until you get into the actual 
healthcare hustle course. So for this webinar, this is the 197 offer, and you get the complete course immediately. You get all the PDFs, the action steps, you get all the bonus content that's available right now and in the future. The bonus content is not restricted to any particular tier. There are several tiers that are available on this webinar, and the next tier involves everything the basic has, but also a one-on-one -on -one su success call where we can talk about your ideas, your obstacles, your hurdling blocks, or just you can just bounce ideas about what you think might work or might not work. And I can kind of tease that out of you. I work with a number of students across a variety of healthcare professions and also non-healthcare professions about pulling ideas out and sort of coaching them to think differently about uh, obstacles and problems to get the maximum amount of success in an accelerated fashion. And if you're interested in the premium option, we'll get three one-on-one -on -one success calls. This, these are up to one hour in length where we can come up with an idea and a strategy that you can implement. I'll turn you loose with an action checklist. We'll check back in at the midpoint of your journey to see where you're at, how things are going and where you're stuck. And then I'll give you another checklist with some action steps about how to solve those. And then we'll wrap it up with a third call about how to take it to the next level and some other ideas about how you can scale this in a 10x type fashion. So I hope you found this helpful. Uh, thank you so much for your time tonight. Again, my name is Mitchell Schwent. The course is exponential.thinkific.com. And the magic that you are looking for is in the work you are avoiding. Have a great night. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.